What if I told you you could recover deleted files, crack passwords, create legitimate forensic images just like they do in law enforcement, and even trace a digital criminal, all from a single USB? Using that USB today, we're going to walk through some professional forensic investigation exercises. This isn't CSI, it's real. And it's all packed into the Ultimate USB version 2.1. If you're not familiar with the Ultimate USB version 2.1, definitely check that out. Link in the description. The product should be tagged here. This USB has everything. Over 50 bootable environments spanning across 13 categories. You've got antivirus and rescue, desktop OS, flyweights, forensics, games where you have a couple of arcades, run emulators and ROMs, hypervisors, miscellaneous tools, multi-tools, win PE repair environments, network tools pen testing and offensive security for all of you hacker nuts out there, privacy and security featuring tails amongst others. If you're down to go browse the dark web, obviously do that at your own risk, but stay anonymous with an operating system like tails included along with others on this USB server OS, a few different operating systems there. And then I include some really nice windows installation media. All right, check it out. Follow the series. I'm going category by category. I've also got a couple videos kind of highlighting the whole thing at a high level back to the show. Today, we are moving through the series where we go category by category and explore everything that the Ultimate USB version 2.1 has to offer. And in this video, we're covering forensics. We have this baby packed with three different full-blown forensic operating systems. So let's jump into each one, look at some tools, and even do some quick demos for you. So the first one we're going to boot into is Kane. Kane stands for Computer Aided Investigative Environment. And this is used by law enforcement, so you know it's legit. Let's go. All right, so this is Kane, Computer Aided Investigative Environment. When you think Kane, a lot of people think autopsy. It's one of the most well known tools out there for investigating forensic images. But that's not all Kane has to offer. It's literally jam-packed with tons of forensic-based tools. So, I mean, we're not going to go through all these today. Just know that if you have a need for computer forensics, there's a very good chance that Kane has a utility or application to help you out. But today, we are going to demo autopsy. And basically, what that does is allow you to conduct a full-blown investigation of a image of a drive or a system. Uh, don't worry, in this video, I'm also gonna walk you guys through how to capture a legitimate forensic image. So you're not just using like a cloning tool, you're using a application that is literally designed to capture a forensic image. These are the same utilities that law enforcement uses, that the FBI uses, so this is legitimate stuff here. All right, so let's launch autopsy. And this will take a second, but in the background, it's going to spin up a little um, local web server. And then once that's ready, it should launch a browser and open us up to that page. And there we go. So it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's very powerful. Uh, this is Autopsy. It's a web front end. Obviously, you could do all this through the command line, but uh, no one really does that for the most case. They're using the UI. So open a case. We're going to do a new case today. And you have to give your case a name. So I'm just going to call mine demo, description demo. And if you had a team of investigators, you could put them all here. But I'm flying solo today until uh, one of my buddies at work joins me on this adventure. But more, more to come on that. You know who you are. All right, new case. Add a host. We're just going to add this local host. So nothing really to configure there. Add an image. This is where you need to add the uh, actual image file. Now, I went ahead and downloaded a demo image from NIST, and I will leave you guys the information if you're interested in that. If you want to do some lab work where you can download forensic images that have already been captured, again, I'm also going to show you how to capture your own, but uh, it can make for a very good lab. They have different types of images for different scenarios um, over on NIST. And again, I'll leave you that link and a little bit more information in the description if you're interested in carrying out one of these mock investigations yourself. All right, so now we need to figure out where this image is. 
So I have just put in a, another flash drive into this computer where I downloaded the image too. So let's go ahead and see if we can find that. One second, let's minimize that guy. Uh, it should be on this 125 volume. Actually, let's go through another utility. So we're gonna look at system tools and let's open up the disk image mounter. And here we can see that if I change this to all files, I have an E01, which is a very common format for these uh, forensic images. There's different utilities that can produce um, these evidence, very secure um, tamper proof type of images for forensic investigations. So again, E01, very common um, extension or file type for investigating. But here we just need to make note that we are in media, SDC1, and then 2020 Jimmy Wilson E01. So let's go back to autopsy. And then we need to do media, SDC1, and it was Jimmy Wilson, I think it was 2020. Jimmy Wilson, and then dot E01. All right, so this is a disk image, and there's different import methods. We're going to leave ours on Simlink today, and we're going to go next. All right, and it shows that there are two different partitions in this particular image, so we're going to go ahead and work with them both. We'll hit Add. They're checked by default. And then we're going to say OK after looking at the details there. And now we can go in and analyze any of these. So I'm going to pick the C drive. And I'm going to say analyze. And now you have to select one of the analysis modes. So you can do a file analysis. Maybe you're looking for a particular keywords if this is a criminal case. Maybe there's, you know, evidence or some type of data that leads you to believe you need to be looking for specific keywords. That's there. File types, image details, metadata and data units. So I'm gonna go under file analysis and you can do a lot of stuff in here. These are the uh, folder structures or the uh, folder layout here. We can expand all the directories if we want and we can see that down here. And then we can show all deleted files. So maybe you're looking for things that this person has deleted. And then if you find any files of interest after searching or browsing through here, you can do a further investigation into that file. So maybe this is a file of, in, or of interest to you. Uh, we can get all of the details here for that particular file. And then we can export the contents, we can view the contents, and we can even generate a report per file. So this is capable of a lot of stuff, right? I mean, you're gonna import a forensic uh, image, and then you're gonna use autopsy to mount that image and perform your investigation. So very powerful tool. Obviously we could do an entire video or a series on this, but just know that Kane is jam packed with forensics tools and one of the most popular of those being autopsy. All right, so why don't we boot into the next one? And then once we get in there, I'm gonna show you guys how to create your own forensic image like we mounted here from this demo file that we got from NIST. And that's great for a lab, but in the real world, you're going to be the one investigating, and therefore you need to know how to create that forensic image. Let's check it out. All right, so depth Z is very powerful. It's not jam packed as much as Kane is. That's why it booted a whole lot faster here. Um, a couple facts about depth Z. This is built on Ubuntu with a powerful arsenal of both CLI and GUI tools. Another fact is this is used by Interpol and European law enforcement. So this is the real stuff here, guys. All right, 
So one of the uh, most popular utilities for a forensic investigator is going to be a good utility to capture that image. So we're gonna use Gaimager here. If we launch this, we're gonna talk through how we can capture our own forensic image. All right, so this is a flash drive that I have on here, but I also have some secondary hard drives. Uh, just for demo purposes, we'll drill into the flash drive itself. Now, this is not the flash drive, the ultimate USB. This is that guy here. So this is a secondary drive. All right, so we can clone the device or we can acquire an image. So for today's purposes, we're going to want to acquire an image. You can give this a case number, an evidence number. You can tell it who the examiner is, create yourself a description, and do all that good stuff, fill this out, give it a directory where you want to store that. And then you're going to pick the format. By default, as you saw when we booted into Kane and mounted that image that we downloaded from NIST, it's going to be in the expert witness format, also known as that E blank blank, right? So the last one was E01. You can also do the advanced forensic image file, which is a AFF, or you can do just a raw DD from Linux, right? If you're familiar with Linux, you probably know about the DD. All right. So all you do is fill this out and then this will light up here and you can say start and that'll give you, you know, it'll run depending on how big the system is or the drive that you're trying to image, take a little bit of time and it's going to create even a MD5 hash for you. So things are tamper proof and you can always go back and say, nope, when I imaged it, this was the hash. Now that I'm looking at the file, it's changed. Someone's tampered with that. We need to go back to the OG file, right? That's why it's always good to get yourself that forensic image and then immediately make a copy of that. So you could duplicate an image here as well, right? So that way you have that golden image, put that away, never touch it. That's your 100% your proof of the time that you captured it, nothing has changed. And again, we rely on integrity via hashes to make sure that nothing has changed. So I'm not gonna launch, I'm not gonna run through this, just know it's very straightforward, you fill this out. We've already pointed it to the device that we're trying to capture. We did that here. And then you're just going to select your hash. You can just leave it MD5 if you want. And again, click start. That'll run for a few minutes. It could take longer depending on the size of the image that you're trying to capture. And then you'll have that file wherever you pointed it to as far as the destination. So this is a destination directory. And then this is your file name. Important to note, do not put the extension there and then your info file name, which will spit out another uh, piece of metadata for you to pair with that image. All right, guys, so this is how they do it. They being law enforcement, government, uh, any entity that is into or responsible for forensic investigations. So, you know, your company, God forbid, gets hit with some major malware, ransomware, whatever the case may be. Uh, if you hire a third party or maybe the government comes in to help you out, they're gonna be using tools that we're demoing here today, including uh, possibly Geimager and some of the utilities on Kane as well, such as Autopsy. Um, and that's just scratching the surface, as you saw when we drilled through those menus, it's jam-packed. So hopefully this helped you guys out. If you need to get a forensic image, you can use Geimager to capture that. And remember, get that MD5 hash and duplicate the image right away and keep that one offline in a secure location. That way you can always validate when you're running your investigations that the MD5 hash of that forensic image matches the OG. In forensics, preserving evidence is everything. DefZ ships with Geimager, letting you clone drives with zero alteration. It's fast, accurate, and even court admissible. All right, we've got one more to show you, so let's do it. All right, guys, we are taking a look at the third and final environment within the forensics category on the Ultimate USB version 2.1, that being Palladian Edge. Let's boot it up. Now, that is a cool wallpaper for a forensics operating system. I've always liked the sword, um, Palladian Edge 64, just beautiful layout here. A couple facts about Palladian Edge. Built by Samuri, used by government agencies. This is a polished UI or user interface with over 100 pre-configured forensic tools. And this is designed to be used even by non-technical investigators. 
All right, so Paladin has its own little built-in toolbox. So if we launch Paladin toolbox, this is very baked and very user-friendly. So unlike something like Autopsy or even Geiminger, where you need to understand how to use it, not that they're super you know, complex, this, again, is geared towards even like a non-technical person. So maybe a law enforcement person that doesn't have an IT background needs to have a utility that's just baked and ready to go. This is a great choice, and it is used by law enforcement agencies as well. So it's just a note there. Make sure your system uh, time is correct because all the logs during this investigation process will be based off of your system clock. So it has a baked-in imager. It has an image converter to get you different types of images. It has a find utility where we can look for keywords across different not only devices, but directories. So we can do some investigative research there. Uh, it has a disk manager, shows you the unallocated parts, and then it has network share. So these are all baked in along with a bunch of other utilities that you would find on other forensics operating systems or environments. All right, and with Paladin Edge, not only does it have this Paladin Edge toolbox that it's probably very well known for, you can also launch things like PhotoRec and other utilities straight from the terminal. Um, obviously going to be a little more difficult. You'd have to know commands and probably use help and stuff like that. But this is kind of the, the bread and butter baked portion of Paladin Edge. All right, so that's all three of the forensic environments on the Ultimate USB version 2.1. Let me know which one is your favorite. Let me know if you've tried any of them. And if you haven't, let me know what your plans are. Are you going to check one of these out? Are you going to use it in a lab? Or maybe you actually have a real world need for it. And remember guys, the Ultimate USB version 2.1 is so much more than just forensics. Although this is a great category with three amazing environments. The Ultimate USB version 2.1 is jam packed. It has 50 bootable environments spanning across over a dozen different categories, forensics being one of them. We're gonna continue to work our way through this series where we go category by category and we check out everything that the Ultimate USB version 2.1 has to offer. If you haven't done so already, get over to bootableusbs.com, check it out, pick one up today, or you can follow along with some of my other series where I show you how to build your own. All right, guys, do me a favor. If you got any value out of this at all or entertainment, hit that thumbs up button. It doesn't cost you a dime. Really helps me out. Helps the channel. Gets this content in front of more people. Obviously, the goal is to grow the channel and the community as well. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. We've got a lot more content coming soon, including a giveaway of the Ultimate USB version 2.1 that's going to happen within the next couple of days here. All right. Hope you all have a great day. Take care.